Hey guys, okay, so I've officially finished my essay, I am done with uni, and so I've been waiting for uni to be over, for the semester to be over for me to be able to do this. For me to be able to marathon all the MCU movies. Recently, if you haven't seen, I think a month ago I did Iron Man trilogy, and about three or four months ago I did Captain America trilogy. So if you want to watch those marathon chats that I did, I'll link them, you can go find them. So I'm not going to be watching those ones because I know I'm just going to be bored out of my mind or I'm just going to like want to get through it because I've watched them recently so there's no point in me like re-watching them. I added up the duration of the rest of the movies and it's like 35 hours. <laughs> I'm probably gonna have like a sleep in between there at some point. It's gonna be a lot of emotions, a lot of tiredness. I think the way I'm gonna structure this video is um, I'm going to like log in like every hour. I hope you guys enjoy this. Let me know if you've done an MCU marathon. I plan on doing future marathons for future franchises as well. So this is gonna be a fun day and a half. Two days. Fuck. Oh my god, I'm gonna be so fucking tired, but um. Yeah, okay, let's just jump into it. Incredible Hulk. I don't remember shit from this movie. It's not actually bad, like, that bad. It's just very, like, I guess forgettable because, you know, they recast Bruce. I don't know why. Why do they recast Bruce? I liked the, um, fight scene, not fight scene, chase scene at the start of the film. The Liv Tyler, like, their relationship, yeah. When he went to the university, I was just like, what the fuck are you doing? Like... Some of the choices are smart and some of them are just fucking stupid. Okay, Incredible Hulk's done. Now I am on to Thor. Incredible Hulk wasn't actually like that bad. I guess it's probably like one of the most forgettable because Edward Norton didn't come back. And it kind of feels like it's completely off the grid. Like you don't even really need to watch it. The origin story of Hulk, I'm so happy they didn't do it like from the beginning that he was already had done the experiment on himself. Like he was already him, if that makes sense, that they didn't do it from the start. I thought that was actually a really good and like a good choice that they made in regards to like pacing. See, I haven't seen Thor in ages. I just remember it being super cheesy and Chris Hemsworth having his eyebrows tinted, like blonde, like bleach blonde. And I don't think I liked Natalie Portman either. I don't think I liked their romance. I thought that it was really bad. So another hour in. It's interesting seeing Loki at this point because he's just learning like you know his actual like origin and where he's from and all that kind of stuff I completely forgot like that Odin like took him when he was a kid and all that kind of shit Chris Hemsworth he annoys me in this one his like personality definitely changes um, in the future films. I was never really fond of him, like, in the beginning. Oh, does Hawkeye come in this part? Oh my god, I forgot Hawkeye, like, features in this. Watching this back now, there's so many things that kind of, like, make sense that didn't at the time. Seeing Thor trying to, like, pick up Mjolnir and just failing is just, it's, it's fucking heartbreaking. Ew, that's mud in your mouth. What are you doing? Ew. <laughs> Now I'm on to the Avengers. Um, Loki is our villain. I'm actually super excited about the Black Widow film that they're making. Obviously it's going to be set in the past most likely, I'm assuming. She puts her head back and it literally headbutts him with her hair. Like whips, whips him with her hair. What do you guys think of Mark Ruffalo? Do you like him better than Ed Norton? Holy fuck! Loki just like screwed out a guy's eye or some shit. Fucking hell, I completely forgot about that. The Thor Hulk fight was fucking hilarious. I love it. Point break, all the fucking banter is great, and it's like cool seeing how all of them are different, like their relationships now compared to like in the future films. It's weird seeing them like talk for the first time and interact for the first time Tell, uh, telling Tony that you know he's not the kind of guy to make the sacrifice and I'm like he makes a sacrifice in this movie then he makes a sacrifice in Endgame like so wrong about Tony so so wrong like you know he comes across as this cocky like guy that makes a joke about everything but really he's like human cap of the heart of these movies 
go Tony, go. It's so weird also seeing Tony like actually getting into his suits and having his suits like as physical things. Cause I'm so used to his like, you know, nanotech and everything. Oh Thor, you're so fucking stupid. You're so stupid Thor. Why, why? Your brother tricks you every single time, except for in Ragnarok. He learns his lessons. Oh, this is where Coulson dies? Oh no. Oh, I forget he dies in this movie. But then he's in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I don't understand how he's in the TV show. I've never watched the TV show. Yikes. He did. He did. <laughs> You cannot say that is one of the most epic moments in cinema history. Seeing that for the first time would have been fucking awesome at the cinemas. Also before they were talking about how Hawkeye and um, Black Widow met and then yeah, S.H.I.E.L.D. found out what was going on with her and then sent Barton to kill her and then he decided not to. I think that would be so fucking awesome if they put that in to the movie. So fucking late. What time is it? 4.30 a.m. <laughs> ah, fuck, I'm stuffed. Okay, I'm gonna go have like a five hour sleep. Avengers is a fucking awesome movie. It's great seeing all the characters back together, like as a full team. Gotta get, I gotta get some um, Z's in. I gotta get a nap in, guys. Um, I'll see him in the morning, I guess. <laughs> Hey guys, okay, yep, it is 11 a.m. I set my alarm for 10.30 a.m. Um, to get out of bed. Originally it was 9.30, and then I woke up at 9.30, I'm like, mm, another hour, I need another hour, so I made it 10.30. But yeah, I haven't seen Thor The Dark World since uh, I first saw it, which would have been when it came out. So it was a very, very long time ago since I've seen this. I literally don't remember anything from this movie. Like literally nothing. This is a pretty average movie, guys. The villain, Malachi, Malachi? No, yes. Something like that. He's so generic and just so fucking boring. Zachary Levi, did he replace like the guy who played him in the previous Thor movie? So I guess Shazam is in this one now. Okay, Ugh, like these fucking dark elf things with their masks and like they're just so like I do love the whole realms, different planets thing though. So I think that's what they nailed is like the whole cosmic side to things. I'm gonna get on to getting some food now because I'm fucking hungry. It is 1 p.m. now. I haven't eaten, so I need food. It's pretty average, like. It's very forgettable. Like I won't rewatch that movie unless I was like forced to rewatch it. Then I'm getting onto Guardians of the Galaxy. In 2014, when I did my top 10 list, this was actually my number one of the year and Captain America Winter Soldier came out the same year. Um, and I think it was like my number eight, but in my actual rankings now, like my top MCU movie is Captain America Winter Soldier. Rewatching this because it's been so long, I now remember why I loved it so much. Like, the chemistry between all the characters is great. Bradley Cooper's voice acting is amazing. I love Rocket so much. Hair and makeup is insane in this. Retrieve the orb, Nebula. I'm interested to see what's going to happen in Guardians 3 as well. I mean, with. Thor there and everything. We gotta wait for James Gunn to direct it after he does Suicide Squad 2. Hey, it's over. Now I'm on to Age of Ultron. A lot of people were like, you know, pretty iffy with this. I remember the trailer people thought that the trailer wasn't a good representation of the movie or some shit like that. That is a hero fucking shot. That's like a tiny, tiny version of what Endgame was like. It's so like minuscule when you think of like the level of things. Language. Language. Oh, this is when we're introduced to the whole romance between 
Nat and Bruce. I feel like there's a lot of good stuff that we got out of this movie. Like, it's not all shit. Come on, Sarah. Come on, Sarah. Come on, Sarah. <laughs> it's such a great character study i think i think that's what's done so well in this movie see some powers i've noticed are like super awesome would be cool to have but some of them are like you wouldn't use them in everyday life i would want to have something that i can use that would make sense and be useful every day time for dinner now that age of ultron is finished my next one is ant-man i've seen it maybe three times and i actually enjoy it from what i can remember i haven't seen it in a while now but I just remember really liking Paul Rudd. I'm just gonna make dinner, salad, eggs. I'm gonna heat up some popcorn later on because I found popcorn in our cupboard and I was like, fuck yeah. <laughs> I mean, how is a movie marathon not complete with our popcorn? Paul Rudd is like the perfect casting choice. Similar to a lot of the other characters and actors, when I see him and picture him, like I see him as Ant-Man. Like he just seems so natural as like the role. And I love the characters in this. I think it's really funny. The humor's good. I like Hope. She's totally badass. So Ant-Man is done. I don't mind that movie. You know, it goes for just under two hours. And I think it's like perfect. It's just a villain. Daniel Cross is so fucking like, I, Yellow Jacket. He's just so just, I'm evil because I'm evil. What's so good about like Thanos and Loki, like yes, they have more time to develop, but it just, they have a better meaning for why they are evil. As a villain, he was very, very poor, but the other characters made up for that shitty aspect of the movie. So I'm um, onto Doctor Strange now, and what I love about Doctor Strange, I've only seen it once, and I just remember loving like, the mind fuckeriness of this movie in regards to its visuals. What mysteries lie beyond the reach of your senses? Ah! At the root of existence, mind and matter meet. Wasn't there a whole controversy about like whitewashing with Tilda Swinton as the ancient one and how there was meant to be some, like it was meant to be someone with an Asian background? Okay, Doctor Strange is over and now we're on to Guardians Volume 2. I don't remember anything from this, like at all guys. Only that it's got ego and that it's baby group. And I remember loving baby group. Nice and colorful and Good music, and um, I guess we'll just keep going. I can see why I thought it was kind of average. I mean, Baby Groot's cute. Um, and like it's an okay movie the characters are still good nebula's still fucking insane it's okay it's like a pretty like middle middle film but i don't remember the ending so that could, i could change my mind on this oh my i'm getting so tired guys oh i'm on to spider-man homecoming tom holland again is like perfect casting fantastic this is like my favorite scene, the monument scene, um, where he like saves them. I love it so, so much. Tom Holland is amazing and I just, yep, I love it. Now, this is where you dip it, all right? The adult is talking. What if somebody had died tonight? Different story, right? Because that's on you. And if you died, I've loved the trailers that's coming out for um, Far From Home. Jake Gyllenhaal's in it. Like, hello. The Ragnarok. Gonna check it on now. Um, fuck, I'm tired. But I'm gonna push through this one. Because then I'll only have five to watch tomorrow. Endgame goes for three hours. Help me.
I love Thor Ragnarok. Taika Waititi's directing is like perfect for this. I think they kind of wanted to revamp Thor's character. And I know like everyone's like, oh, the third movie, this movie is like so different for the first two, like in tone. And yes, it is. But I think that wasn't a bad thing. I think this was a, like a super smart choice on Marvel's like part. Kate Blanchett is so fucking badass. I think she was, she's definitely one of the better ones that doesn't get development over like multiple movies. We haven't seen Hulk like this really before. So it's funny to see him kind of like in his element throughout majority of the movie. The whole like style of this movie, the music, the colourfulness, I just, I love everything about this film. It's just so much fun and I think that's what they brought to Thor's character is fun and humour. Strongest Avenger. Oh god, Thor Ragnarok is over. Oh my god, it's 4:30 a.m. I have five left, five films left. Yeah, I think it's. I think I added it up between 11 and 12 hours tomorrow, and then I'll be done. Matt is back tomorrow. Matt is home. He's been away, so it's not going to be dead silent in the house because it's just been me all on my lonesome watching Marvel movies in my spare time. I'm gonna get sleep. I set my alarm for 10:30. I'm gonna wake up, and then. And then watch some more. So I set two alarms for 10.30, 5 and 10.40. And I slept through both of them. <laughs> oh my god. I woke up at like 1.30. <laughs> uh, I guess my body needed that sleep. But fuck. I'm behind now. I've only seen Black Panther once. One time. When it was at the movies. And I thought it was good. I guess we'll see what we think. Everyone, yeah, everyone really enjoyed Black Panther. Like a lot of people loved it. I thought it was just okay. Like I thought it deserved its Oscars, but I don't think it deserved being nominated for best picture. Like, no. <laughs> liking this I think more than the first time I saw it Michael B Jordan everyone thought that he was like you know the new best villain in the MCU and I just I was not fond of him him compared to a lot of other villains actually had a motivation that made sense wasn't like realistic and log logical but I could understand where they were coming from however I just didn't like Killmonger like I just I don't know why, I just wasn't, he just didn't vibe with me. We've got the generic white guy, Martin Freeman. <laughs> oh, I love Sherlock so much. It's so weird hearing him with an American accent. I don't know how I feel about it. It doesn't feel natural to me at all. But you can't deny the production and set design is fucking amazing. And like the costumes are just out of this world. I love the score. Oh my God, the music is so fucking good. You know what? I kind of like it more the second time around, but I just love how colorful it is and how pretty it is, except the special effects guys. Oh my God, that last scene. Oh, that last action scene, guys, no. No. <laughs> Fuck. It did not look good at all. It was very on and off. Now we're gonna jump onto Infinity War, guys. Infinity War. Fuck. Now this movie breaks, just, it breaks me. Matt is back. Matt came back. Yay! So now Zoe's back and now I can get cuddles from Zoe. And now we're into Avengers. Fuck. I just remember like loving this movie and I just now I remember why I loved it so much. It's just 
it's so over the top and like but in a good way and seeing all of the characters actually fucking come together like it's insane isn't it zoe it's fucking insane it's fucking crazy are you gonna watch infinity war and the mcu movies with me now I think she is. 5 p.m. and I still have three movies, three and a half movies to go, but really Endgame is like two movies because it goes for like fucking three hours. Fuck, 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 this is gonna go late again. <laughs> God damn it, Quill, what the fuck is wrong with you? I know that like, you know, he's going through pain because he found out Gamora died and all that shit, but think clearly. What, what the fuck's wrong with you? You could blame him. You could seriously blame him for this whole thing. No matter how many times I watch this movie, <laughs> Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good. Uh, I don't want to go. I don't want you to go either, Peter. <laughs> I remember Ant-Man and the Wasp being pretty boring. I'm nearly there. I'm seven hours. T minus seven hours until this is over. Let's fit Ron back together and then Hulk's heart is on. I'm worried. I can't trust him. And he's going to screw up again and ruin everything. And then my heart is on like that fancy raspberry filling represents a company friend and we're days away from going out of business. Oh! It is a pretty like, yeah, just generic movie, filler movie, nothing like that exciting. I mean, Sonny Birch, Sonny Birch, Birch, is that his name? The villain, well, one of the villains. He's just so blah. I do prefer the first movie, the first Ant-Man over this one, definitely. And I'm assuming they're going to have a third one to make this a trilogy, like the Ant-Man trilogy. Finished Ant-Man and the Wasp. Just skip that movie, really. It's nothing too important. Just watch the post credits and you'll know that they disappeared in the snap. Um, now I'm watching Captain Marvel. It's her second last film. I had some issues with it, but I thought it was like all right. I thought it was pretty fun, and but I'd forgotten some stuff from it. The de-aging is insane in this movie. I mean, Samuel L. Jackson and um, the guy who plays Coulson, it just baffles me what they can do. And then I look at some of the other special effects in this movie and it looks so shitty. It looks so fucking bad. Like, some of the special effects in this, it's just... <sighs> what? Like, what am I looking at? Until she lands on Earth, it is so fucking dark. And I remember it like that in the cinema as well. I love hearing an Australian accent though. That's one thing that I love. That opening scene with Hawkeye is so heartbreaking. I was very conflicted with Fat Thor. <laughs> I thought it was really funny, like at the time, and I have had to like, you know, think about it for for a while. And I don't mind it. Jeremy Renner's acting is so good in that scene. Fuck. You knew going into this when you found out that the two of them were the ones going to Vormir, that one of them was going to die. If we're looking at the first, second, and third act, they're all very different, but I think I like had the most fun in the second act just because it's gone, like you're going back in time to all of these places. Like when I was watching this movie at the cinemas, I just remember laughing and gasping and enjoying it so much because it, you do have that nostalgia feel. Full body chills, guys. Zoe, I can't handle this. Oh, Peter's back. Oh, look at Tony's face. <laughs> oh my God. I like it a 
emotional, like, happy tears from that scene with everyone turning up and then they just assemble and then just Zoe. Zoe can't handle this. It was probably like the best ending that they could give Tony. Oh, let me just compare myself for a second. <laughs> Just so you know, this is my ship still. I'm in charge. I know. I know. Of course you are. Of course. The marathon's over, guys. Oh my god. Zoe, you don't know how, like, long this has been going for. It's been literally two days and three hours. I just love these movies so much. Endgame is just a reminder of that for me and for fans. If you lasted all the way to the end of this video, I don't know how long it's going to go for. Let me know if you lasted all this time. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts on the Marvel movies. Um, and I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> Bye.